What's up guys and gals, Aaron here from BikeBandit.com. Today we're going to be showing you the best way to flush your coolant system and replace your coolant, so stay tuned. So it's been about two years since I've flushed my coolant system and replaced the coolant, so it's definitely time to go ahead and service the whole system. The process we're going to do today will take place in three parts. First, draining the old coolant, then flushing the system, and last, putting in a new coolant of your choice. This job is not complicated, but it does take a while, so let's jump right in and get started. Here's the supplies you're gonna need to do this job. First, you're gonna need some engine ice. You're not gonna need just one, but you're gonna need two. Then you're gonna get yourself a drain pan with a spout. And then you're gonna get yourself some paper towels. Then you need to get yourself some distilled white vinegar. Where's my funnel at, man? It's long, it's red, and you put oil in it. And last, but not least, some distilled water. And that there is all you need for this here procedure. First off, you'll need to gain access to three things. Your radiator cap, your coolant drain plug, and your coolant overflow tank. Check your owner's manual to see where each of these things are and remove any necessary parts to access them. Make sure you keep track of each of the fasteners you remove, especially if they're different lengths or sizes. Now let's get started with the first part of the process, draining the old coolant. Now here's a very important safety tip. You absolutely have to do this when your bike is cold. If you don't, the pressure of the hot coolant in your system will give you a nasty surprise, something like this. So once you know your bike is cold, you can go ahead and remove the coolant drain plug and set it aside. The old coolant will start to drain, but it may not run out very fast, until you release some pressure by coming up here and popping open the radiator cap. Once we do that, the old coolant will come pouring out. Let it drain until it's empty, and put this in a sealed container for disposal, because it can be very hazardous. Now we can't forget about your overflow tank. Pop that off also, drain whatever's inside it, and reinstall it. You may want to clean it out while you have it off too, especially if you see any residue built up inside there. Now once your system is empty, replace your drain plug, but just finger tight. We're going to drain the system at least one more time and this bolt is easy to strip, so we don't want to put too much stress on it right now. Next, we'll get into the flushing portion of the job. Now there are two ways we can do this step. One is a simple flush with distilled water, which will rinse the old coolant out of the system so you can put the fresh coolant in. The other is a cleansing flush, which will use a mildly acidic solution to clean out the system before we put the new coolant in. This adds a step, but it's great to do if your bike has been sitting a while or if you're not sure about how it was maintained before, like if you've just acquired a used bike. We'll show you both and you can choose what's best for you. First, the cleansing flush. We're going to do this by filling the system with a cleansing solution and then cycling it through to clean everything out. The flushing agent we're going to use is a mildly acidic solution made by mixing 50% distilled water and 50% white vinegar, which will remove any deposits that might have built up around the cooling system. Mix up some of this solution and fill your cooling system with it. Now we need to get it cycled through the system and the bike is going to do this for us. Here we'll start the bike and leave it running until it gets to operating temperature where the thermostat will open up and the water pump will cycle our flushing agent throughout all the channels in the cooling system. Now you sometimes see people simply run water from top to bottom in the system, pouring water into the radiator and letting it drain out through the water pump. The problem with this is that gravity alone will not flush out all the hoses and cooling channels in the engine. You need to actually force it through the system, which is exactly the water pump's job. Once the fans kick on, let it run for two or three minutes, then turn off the bike and let it cool completely. Remember, if you don't, once again, it will take a while to let your bike cool, so try to find something productive to do in the meantime. Once the bike is completely cool, drain it again, and don't forget to drain the overflow reservoir again also if you need to. Now we need to flush out the flushing agent, or if you skip that step, get straight to flushing the system. For this job, we'll just use good old distilled water. Just fill your system with the water and do the same thing. Run the bike until the thermostat opens up and the fan kicks on, cycling the clean water throughout the system. Let it run for a few minutes and then kill it and let it cool completely again. Once again, try to find something productive to do in the meantime. Now with the bike cooled off, we'll drain the water we use to flush the system and get ready to fill it with fresh coolant. Now when it comes to new coolant, you have a few options. The most important thing you need to consider here is if you need antifreeze in your coolant or not. If you live in a climate where it gets cold and don't use antifreeze in your coolant, the coolant can actually freeze in your lines and cause huge problems like warped heads or a cracked radiator core. 
So for you guys that live in cold climates, you might want to use a traditional 50-50 mix of distilled water and antifreeze like the green stuff that you would get at an auto parts store. What I'm going to be using today is this product, Engine Ice. Engine Ice is a great all-around product. It helps your engine run 10 to 20 degrees cooler, provides antifreeze protection all the way down to negative 26 degrees, and it's pre-mixed so it's easy to use. It's even biodegradable and non-toxic, so it's also safe to have around pets and people. Since this is the last time we'll be filling the cooling system, it's time to fasten the drain plug for the long haul. This is where we'll go ahead and install the new crush washer if we got one, and torque the bolt to spec. Now we just have to fill the cooling system. First fill it to capacity, but remember, there are still a lot of air cavities in the system that we have to get rid of. Go ahead and run the bike until the fans come on again, and let the water pump cycle the coolant through the system. This is the last time you'll have to let the bike cool, so try to find a good way to pass the time. Once it cools, just top it off again to compensate for the air that has worked its way out. And lastly, don't forget to fill the coolant reservoir to between the low and max lines. So now with fresh coolant in our system, we're ready to go start tearing up the streets again. We hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to get more how-tos just like this sent to your inbox every week. And don't hesitate to leave us comments or tell us what you thought, or ask us any questions you might have. Remember, you can always give us a call at the number below or email us at help at bikebandit.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.